Welcome. Exercise 12, AutoCAD 2021. In this exercise, we take a look at the functionality within AutoCAD solids when using the rendering tools. And this is just a basic overview. It's not going to go into super high depth. But if you wanted to output this bottle as an example, as something that looks just rendered, here are some of the steps that we could do. First of all, when you have shades of gray turned on, that negates any of those options. So let's go ahead and turn on realistic. Now, make sure you go to the visualize tab. If you don't have the visualize tab, you could right click on any of these tabs and show tabs and find visualize. And if you're on 2022, like many of my students probably are right now, because that just came out recently, um, this bar is a little bit swapped around like the materials browser is over here i believe and same with the renders over here this realistic is over here so you can find the icons they all look the same they're just a little bit in different spots so you should be able to find them though all right so first of all to go over like you'll see there's this render to size if you click on that little arrow under there you'll see there's different sizes there's like high definition there's even much higher different definition so these are for beautiful large scale images, but the 800 by 600 is really nice just for a quick little rendering. It doesn't take long because the larger you get, the longer it may take depending upon the speed of your computer. So I'm going to leave it at an 800 by 600. There's also settings for low, medium and high and lunch quality, overnight quality. So the higher you set it, the longer it's going to take. You can also render to the cloud and it uploads it to Autodesk's online rendering service. And there is, I believe, as for students, you get some rendering time free, maybe. I'm not positive about that, but you could check into it. But normally, if you're a company, you have to pay for it. So, um, But it might be worth your while because it takes the resources away from having to, your computer having to do that. Okay, so I'm going to... Now, to render it, let's just do a quick render to size. Click on the actual teapot. Now, this is going to pop up in the Medium Image Library. You could download it. Um, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to use the basics one that we're provided with here. And when I render it, yours might actually be completely black. It's because I have a, a presetting in here, and I want to show you how to do that. So yours probably isn't going to look exactly like that. Let me show you how to do that, though. Under the teapot here, there's this render bar. Click on that. You'll see render environment and exposure. I have mine on, but turned off and render to size. This is probably more like what you're getting that. Okay, so to activate that, just turn it on, and you'll see sharp highlights is set there. There's also plaza, um, there's dry lake bed, a lot of neat little options. Another thing, make sure that um, perspective's on, so to type in PER down below here in the command line, and make sure perspective, select perspective. It should be set to one. That means it's on. Perspective creates a vanishing point, much like when you look at a room from or take a picture of a room from the backside, everything seems to get sm smaller the further it gets away. And that's what you just want to make sure that's on. If that's off, the renderings look a little fake. Um, and this, so this adds a, a venture of reality. Now, with that set, you'll see that there's exposure, there's white balance. I'm not going to tinker with those, but you are welcome to play with them. And I will leave it on dry lake bed for right now. Another thing we want to do is find the materials browser. The materials browser, this little checkered ball, is usually over here on the left on 2022, but I'm going to go ahead and click on it. Now, you have the ability in here to enlarge, first of all, some of the thumbnails, um, like for here, text view, list view, thumbnail view. There's different settings. I'm going to go with... Uh, don't want text view because I actually like to see it. We'll go with list. And then also there's the thumbnail size that you could adjust. So you can get a nice preview there, what you might want. But also in the Autodesk library, if you hit this little arrow here, you'll see there's concrete, finishing, coat, floors, glass, liquids, masonry, and so on and so forth. Um, in this case, I'm going to go all the way down. I actually want to stick with metals just because I love the reflective effects of metals. You get to see some nice images, but feel free to go with plastic because as, as we know, the bottle would likely be a plastic or a polymer as they're known. All right. And so from there, you could scroll down and find something you like. Like, for example, I'm going to go with a chrome and 
this is polished blue, polished black. Interesting. I'm going to go ahead and put that in my library. So I, my uh, documents area. So I'm going to click on that little arrow and that brings it up there. Now, what I can do is right now this is selecting, uh, this is actually a collection of surfaces. So that's why I'm getting that. But if I click and drag a fence to surround everything, and if you have a solid, if you click on it, it just selects everything by default. You can now just click on Chrome and then it gives you this effect. Now in the realistic setting, you get this, which um, doesn't look like much. And if you rotate, you'll see it's because uh, there's not much reflecting off of it. Now, what we can do is let's go ahead and take a look, render to size and see what it looks like in the with the renderer. Okay, and there we're getting a much more dramatic effect. You can see it kind of looks like the Terminator 2 um, movie character, the T-1000, that a liquid metal. Now let's see if we want to dress that up a little bit. Let's go and we'll add gold metal. And I want to add it just to these surfaces here and here and the bottle neck. Click on it. All right, let's render it again. Render to size. And there you can see the effect that we're getting. Now, if you want to add even more to it, like where you get a better shadow effect, I like to add a floor. So uh, in my own custom floor. So I'm going to go home here and just make sure that your grid is on. You can turn the snap to grid. And as long as your part was built on top of here, you won't have to move it. If, if it was built on the X, Y, and Z coordinate there. Or I should say the world coordinate. So here I'm going to go. You'll see that there's primitives. I'm going to go with box. And then right about here, I'm going to click and drag out a box around it. I'm just eyeballing it. Once I get to the size I like, click and then drag it down a little bit and I'm only going to make it like 0.3 thick or so. I could turn off the grid uh, snap. Now let's take a look. Let's zoom up to that and let's try rendering it now. Now also by the way under home your filter if you want to select individual faces and I failed to show this to you earlier because this is a collection of surfaces so I didn't need this but fate you would select face and then you could select individual faces if it's a solid. All right, now let's go ahead and try rendering this again. So we have to go back to visualize and render to size. And now you can see the floor and you get this cool little shadow effect. Now there might be a way to get the shadow effect on the base. I'm not sure, um, but on how, but that's why I like to put a floor in. Now we could actually add a material for the floor as well. So let's say uh, we have this aluminum flat. Let's add that. And now select the floor. Click on the aluminum. And let's give it another render to size. You could hit do not show this dialog. I'm going to leave mine active because I do probably, one of these days I'm going to try and do that. And look at that. Look at the effect you're getting now by making that material at the bottom. In this case, it's metal and we get this lighting effect, which is pretty outstanding. Now, if you want to make a much higher resolution image, of course, or if you want to save this, and this is good enough to send in to me and those of you who are taking my course, the 118, uh, you could just go to save right here. And then you have the ability to save it. PNG or JPEG are, are good ones. They're compressed formats. PNG uh, has is almost a lossless um, uh, renderer. So basically, uh, if JPEG has a tendency to degrade, whereas PNG is better. So that's why they usually you'll hear they recommend PNG these days. But JPEG is fine too for for this or making a portfolio. All right, so you would just export it out that way. Now I have tried to print here as a PDF and I've uh, had some issues it, with it sometimes, but uh, you could give that a shot too. With the render, for some reason, I um, the images don't come out as I'd expected, but I'm not going to go through that. That might just be operator error on my case. Okay, so with that being said, now that we know how to add some of those things, we could set it to a higher resolution, like here's 1080. That's what you have on your HD TV, a typical HD TV, not a 4K, of course. 4K goes much higher than that. 
but let's go ahead and run, uh, and we could even set it higher here. Like I'll set it to high and render to size. Click on it. Okay, now this little box that it gives you can be expanded to fit it. And look at that. Um, oh boy, does that look much better with the higher resolution. And now you're getting up there in the quality that you would want for a portfolio piece for a beginner. And you can see it's rendering. Um, if we take a look here at my computer, I am actually running uh, with a, a Ryzen 3950, which has 16 cores and 32 threads. And here you could see all the threads. And they were, while it was rendering, it doesn't look like it was using all of them, strangely enough. Um, Let's go ahead. I, I just want to try that again. I'm going to hit render. I'm just curious. And this, you don't have to know this part of it. Oh, look at that. It is. It's using all of the CPUs. So those of you who have a higher performance processor, it's definitely worthwhile, especially in a company. I have about 32 megabytes of RAM, but it doesn't look like we're using much of that here. All right. And so again, you would just go to save and save it, give it a name, save it. I would recommend PNG, and then you could upload that on D2L. Now, if you want just the basic types of rendering, you could go and you, there's, I have a video posted for that too. Actually, this is my third video. So I have very basic and then I go up to medium and then this is a little bit more advanced. All right. And that concludes this exercise.